Hello all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Tying video production. Here I'll be sharing my favourite flies and methods of tying them to make catching fish better for the anglers of the world and also making tying these flies easier with my styles and techniques and how I do it. All the flies that I tie I'll personally use and they catch me plenty of fish and they're not just for the angler, they're for the fish. At the end of each video there will be a list of materials required to tie each of the flies in case you missed it in the video and also a link to the online shop where you can purchase the flies and materials required to make the killer patterns. I hope you enjoy the video and you will pass the word about my channel. Subscribe, get your fellow anglers to subscribe as well so that we can keep this thing going. Uh, today I'm going to tie the Sighter Clink Hammer. So it's a new version. It's the same fly but obviously with the new camera, higher definition, you should be able to see it a lot more clearly. Uh, for that I'm tying it today on a size 10 check nymph hook barbless which is fully mill. Some guys will put a little uh, ring on the end of the fly, I don't bother. So what we're going to need is TMC arrow wing. Now as I says, everybody's eyes are different, so different colours but I just find the pink and the orange mixed. You can see from miles away. For the body, we're just using black seals for, or you can use a substitute. You can use anything you like, really. Candy floss, dubbing. You can tie them in olive, but I like black. I think black stands out more. So what we need to do is, and obviously we're going to use a really good, decent quality black hackle for the fly. Now the fish actually eat this indicator, so that's why I like it, because fishing a bung or a float or a a bobber. The fish might come up for it but they don't really, they're not trying to eat it. So what we've got here is, is four strands. So that's two bits. So two folds of the card. So you take it off the card, right, and you get two folds. So you want two folds. So that's me got the pink and I've got the orange so we put the two together. Now obviously I need to put a thread on the hook. So we're using Wisp 14 Old Black. It says if you're tying all of you could use all of thread or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. So we're just going past the point of the hook and then we're coming back forward. So we're about two thirds of the way up. Obviously you can put the post where you like. So what I'm going to do is just flatten it down, right? Then we're going to Fold it, I'm going to have a wee bit of thread and I'm going to fold it around the thread, right? See the way I'm pulling it in a V shape? Catch it with my left hand and then we're going to take the bobbin. We're going to slide it, right? So it'll slide up and down the thread and then we're just going to catch it in and it'll sit up like that, right? Now obviously, some people put it under the hook shank. I don't really like it under the hook shank because then I get a bit, a bit of bulk. So that's two turns, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven turns of thread on there and then just pull all of that up, right? Pull it all up and then just start building your little platform for your, your hackle. Right, so what we're now going to do is start wrapping it around Eventually what will happen is, once you get a bit of a base there, you can just let go and just wind the thread round the base. Right, so I'm just winding it around the base just now to get me a platform for my hackle to sit against. It's really up to yourself how far up you go, but we are going to put quite a lot of hackle on this fly. And a lot of guys have said, do you really need the arrow wing because it's expensive? Well, I think it works better than anything else. I've had it actually floating with a tungsten bead underneath it or two tungsten beads underneath actually floating upside down on the post. Right, so at this point we're not going to cut the post. Right? What we're going to do is put some varnish on it. put a bit of varnish around the post and while it's drying I'm going to quickly talk about my setup when I'm fishing, the dual trio tandem dry fly dropper, it's got a different name everywhere, indicator, right, so basically what I'll, depending on where I'm fishing, how I'm fishing, 
a lot of times in a competition, obviously you can't have the uh, if it's a Fitz Moose rules competition, you can't you can't be tying off the bend of the hook. Now even though it's barbless, I still don't have issues. Very rarely do I lose flies off the bend. But in a Fitz Moose competition it's not allowed. It must be on a dropper. So tie your dropper as short as you can. Right. The other thing what I tend to do is I use an old dry fly leader, you know, a tapered uh, nylon leader that, that that's kind of knackered, if you like. It's seen seen its best of days. So I will shorten it. So I maybe have five foot, four foot to to, to the, this fly tied on, and I don't care if it, it ends up. Sometimes you're struggling to push the bit of nylon through because it's so thick. But these things cost a fortune. Arrow wing's not cheap. And I don't mind losing an nymph, but I really don't like losing an indicator, to be quite honest. So I want it on a pretty strong piece of nylon. So as I say, I'll, I'll probably get a 9 foot or a 12 foot leader and I'll cut it down to maybe 5 or 6 foot maximum. And then I'll tie it on. And it's always that way. So I'll always try to have the strongest piece of nylon connected to this indicator. Which does make sense, because they cost, as I say, they cost a lot of money to tie. The arrow wing's not cheap, it's like £8 odds a card. And you get maybe... 20 flies out of two cards but they are worth it you can see this thing a mile away and it just sits up and as I say 2.3, 2.4, 2.8, 3.2 uh, it'll hold all those nymphs up and, and as I say so <laughs> the double edged sword is it'll catch me fish as well I've caught some quite a few big big fish on the river tumbling competition so it's getting me that extra fish that maybe a bobber wouldn't get especially in a competition so let's go back up. And what we're now going to do is we're going to put the hack on. So we go to the front of the post, right? So we obviously need to get the hackle prepared. So I'm going to take that stuff off. So we're tying the hackle with the concave facing towards me. I'll catch it in. Right. So just tie that in. Just run the thread up until it gets to the post, lift the hackle straight up, so the hackle is now straight up in the air, okay, and then we'll wrap around the base, so that's me putting the hackle into the position, getting it ready to go, a couple of extra strands there, and we'll just clip away, right, another one, clip that away as well, right, so next thing we're going to do is go back down the hook shank, so let's go down, get to here, obviously because it seals for I'm going to wax the thread, sometimes I'll use mink or whatever I've got available, candy floss dubbing works as well, it's really up to yourself what kind of dubbing you want to use, but I only really tie these all of black and hairs here, but black seems to be my favourite, for some reason big fish like to come up and munch it. Right, so we'll just dub on the seals for. Right, I'm going to dub this on quite tightly. I don't want it all popping off. And push it up. Right, and then we'll just, as I say, always using the left finger, the index finger to push it. Just push the post out of the way. Okay, so that's us done half the body. So we'll now go to the front. What? It's kind of different the way I finish this fly off. I'm going to put another bit of wax on there actually. Oh, and the wax jumps away. Right, a bit more dubbing. And then we'll just wind that on as well. Okay. Then I'm going to go around the back of the post, right? So you can see there's a wee gap there. So we want to make sure the dubbing's tight and just wind it underneath and then over so it's like, almost like a figure eight. Okay, any extra bits just give them a quick clip off. Right, so that's us done the body of the fly. Now we're going to wind the hackle. Now the hackle's going to go up the way. Don't worry about it being too wide. So that's two turns, that's three turns. So we're winding it up the post, it's four turns. Notice I'm not using hackle pliers, I'm using my fingers. Right. Five turns. Six, 
seven. Now I've got about two and a half inches of hackle left, so I need to go back down eight, nine, and the last one is going to be ten. Okay, now I'm going to just catch that and then I'm going to show you what I've done. So, what I'm doing is I'm feeding the thread under the hackle to catch that into the post. So that's it caught in. Right, so it's basically finished almost. Right, so the last thing we want to do is we want to take our hackle pliers. Now, we are going to get the, get your varnish ready. Right, because what we need to do is work it around the post. So we're using quite a big loop and we're constantly working back and forward. So if you watch this hand, I'm letting the thread go so I can get it around. I'm not holding it tight and then we want to just push it off right, and keep that loop. So we've still got the loop on the thread. That's where we're going to put varnish on it. So that when we pull it tight, the varnish goes under into the post and tightens it. Obviously the thread snapped off there, but there's a bit hanging down so it's fine. Then just trim the little excess bits off. But that's basically it. What we're now going to do is we're just going to cut that post. And then just push it down with our thumb. And you can see there, right? So you can see the colours of it. And that's it. And that thing will float for ages and it'll hold tungsten beads up, it'll hold one, two, whatever you want. And that fly is just fantastic. So as I say, it's a really good fly. It catches your fish when maybe you're struggling to get an odd fish. It's certainly helped you out in a lot of competitions. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you tell your mates, I hope you tie them up and you go and catch fish. So if you go and follow me on Facebook, David C Downey, or Instagram, Dave Downey Fly Fishing, or my guiding sites, DaveDowneyFishing.com, or go to my online shop, it's www.fly-fishingworld.com. So thanks for watching another Dave Downey Fly Time video production. Have a great day and go and catch fish with these things. You know, stick some pictures up on Facebook, stick some pictures up, tag me in them, or stick the picture of some of these fish that you catch uh, using this setup uh, on my Facebook. I'm more than happy to see how people are getting on because that's what it's about. Sharing is caring. So I hope you all enjoyed it. And until the next time, I'll speak to you again. Bye.